And we're joined now by Max Steyer, an expert in presidential transitions and the president and CEO of the Partnership for Public Service. Max, I just want to start with, give us a sense of the scope of a transition. The transitions are huge. When you think about this, it's the largest, most important takeover of any organization, not just on the planet, but in history. Uh, you have a $4 trillion organization. You have 4 million people when you count the military. You have 4,000 political appointees. I might add that's a little bit of a vestige of this spoil system, so we talk about drain the swamp, another conversation. It's a 1,100 of those 4,000 have to go through the Senate confirmation process. You have to put together a budget. You have to deal with not only all the things that are coming at you, but things you cannot expect, the asteroids that inevitably uh, take place in a world as dangerous as this one. And so that's why both campaigns, although now only it cares, matters that the Trump campaign, started their transition work a while ago. But how much, if they started months ago, of this work is really can be done ahead of time? Well, you're exactly right. If you only focus on the period between the election and inauguration, there's no possible way that you can be ready. You have to start earlier. Both campaigns did. Clinton and Trump did very, very strong work. The hard part comes now because, as you're right, there's only so much you can do pre-election. And then you have to merge your campaign and your transition apparatus, but you have to move over real fast. Most folks, I think, are looking through the wrong end of the telescope. They're examining one or two appointments as they come forward here. The reality is that you have to look at what are the goals that the transition teams are actually uh, uh, taking on. They ought to be uh, taking on the, the, the proposition that they need to make sure that they have their team on the field, a, a, an equipped team, from day one, from the second that they actually run the government. Transitions are also the point of maximum vulnerability for us. In a po post 9-11 world, we have to make sure that the new president has their team in place, that they have a game plan, and they're ready to go from second one after they swear on that Bible. And how possible is that realistically, though? Or, or if not, give us some number of months that it might take to, to get a team fully in place. Look, I think it is uh, more than anybody can ever fully get done, but they have to move the ball for, further down the field than anyone has done it before. I think people are looking the wrong way when they look in the rear view mirror and say, how much did Barack Obama did? How much did President Bush do? The real question is, can you get that team in place and the right team in real time? For us, that means making sure you have your White House fully staffed by right after the inauguration, that you have 100 of your top Senate confirmed p uh, people in place. And that means you've got to move with dispatch. And you have to be thinking about this as teams, not as single individuals, because you'll never get there if you add one, one, one. You got to do it in bigger, bigger groups. So where is the Trump team on your got to move fast timeline? Well, too early to tell. I think the more important point is not how many people have they named, but rather have they embraced the objective, the, the objective of making sure they actually are ready to go on day one, that they'll have their team in place, that they'll have their game plan designed, and that they've built the relationships that they need with critical stakeholders, Congress, the federal workforce, and others. Last 30 seconds, we've talked about quantity. Talk about quality, though. Some of these people are going to be picked. You'll never hear about them, but they'll have real power. You're 100% right. Uh, we've actually been producing job descriptions, position descriptions of those 4,000 jobs. They don't exist otherwise. We need people here who are not just outsiders or not just people who have the policy alignment that the president-elect wants, but people who can actually manage, manage real large organizations. If you look in the past, whether it was Hurricane Katrina, healthcare.gov, these are management problems. We need to make sure the government is staffed at the very top leadership positions with the very best experienced people we can possibly get. All right, Max Steyer, thank you so much for that description. We appreciate it. Thank you.